diseases. There are 280 genetic diseases in man for which the gene has been identified, and it has recently been found that the fruit fly has two-thirds of those genes. Now, Dr. Hovind might say this is because they have a common designer, but a nuclear power plant and a light bulb are both designed by General Electric. Do you think we can learn about two-thirds of the things that go wrong with a nuclear power plant by studying a light bulb? I somehow doubt it. Uh, in conclusion, evolution is a good scientific hypothesis because it makes many testable predictions. It suggests experiments and observations that we can do, and most importantly, it's potentially falsifiable or disprovable. This means that it makes such strong predictions that if they were not confirmed, the hypothesis would have to be rejected. Uh, and I challenge Dr. Hovind to tell us why creationism deserves consideration as a scientific hypothesis. Tell us what predictions it makes. Tell us how it could, in principle, be falsified. Tell us what observations or experiments could, even in principle, disprove it. But evolution is more than just a hypothesis. Its major predictions have been confirmed, as I've shown you examples. Uh, it has withstood people's best attempts to disprove it. It stood up to some really rough tests that could have easily disproven it if it hadn't been true. For example, suppose the world really were only 6,000 years old, like Dr. Hovind says. Then we would have determined the ages of lots of rocks, and none of them would have been more than 6,000 years, uh, 6, years old, and so evolution would have been in the trash. But that's not what happened. Uh, another example, if species were really related, sorry, really created independently, then we might have found that dolphins had half their genes similar to sharks and the other half similar to mice. Uh, and so evolution would have been disproved, but that didn't happen. Another thing about evolution is that it explains things that no other hypotheses can, and as I mentioned, it's been extraordinarily useful in guiding productive research. Uh, this is why evolution is accepted by virtually all biologists, geologists and biochemists, uh, and that's why it, degree, it deserves to be called a theory. A scientific theory is not just a hypothesis, it's a, something that's been well established. Uh, and indeed, it's not only a reasonable theory, as we are de debating, it's one of the most important and the best established theories in modern science. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Holvind will have 10 minutes for rebuttal, and then he will also be allotted 20 minutes to present his side of creation. All right. Well, thank you so much for being so patient. I apologize for being late. I missed, I didn't miss, the first flight was canceled leaving Pensacola. So uh, they said, the quickest we can get you there is 5 o'clock. I said, well, how far a drive is it from there to Oshkosh? They said, two hours. I said, let me drive. We will cut that down some. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But it's an honor, uh, honor to be here tonight, and I appreciate you all coming out. Um, what we're supposed to be discussing tonight is basically the question, is evolution a reasonable scientific theory? I think we need to, first of all, uh, define a few terms here. Um, evolution has quite a few different meanings. I got these straight out of the dictionary here. Uh, an unrolling, an unfolding process. Um, the one we're discussing here tonight is probably more relates to number four, uh, has, a, has to do with biology. The development of a species, organism, etc., from its original to its present state. Now, this definition of evolution is a little bit deceitful. What happens, as I'll show you in a minute, a lot of other things are uh, smuggled in along with this definition. There is no question the organisms we have today are descended from their ancestors, obviously. And there is no question there have been some changes. Now the question is, how far do the changes go, and where do you leave science and enter religion, speculation? <laughs> the Christians have no argument, uh, the creationists have no argument with ch organisms changing, but we think they're, cha they're limited to the same kind. 
Several times, Dr. Paulson tonight uh, emphasized the changing of species, the changing of species. Well, now, species is kind of a nebulous term. A dog, a wolf, and a coyote are different species. Look them up. Canis lupus, Canis domesticus, but they're interfertile. Nobody's ever nailed down a good, hard, solid definition of species. The examples he gave of the gulls, you know, not being able to interbreed, well, stand 30 feet away and look at it. It's still a bird. <laughs> okay, it's a gull. That's not evolution. The Bible never says they're going to bring forth after their species. The Bible said they bring forth after their kind. And just because you get two animals that end up being slightly different variety that some scientist today decides to call them a new species, it doesn't mean they're a different kind. I did not see one example this evening so far of any evolution showing a different kind of animal. It's just an, what, they, what somebody calls a new species. So if we're going to deal with the development of, of species, organisms, etc., from its present to its, to its, from its original to its present state, or that all species descended from earlier forms, I'll go along with that. Evolution happens. But that's not what the textbooks teach. They go many steps beyond this and teach the kids that all life forms came from one common ancestor. Probably all the dogs came from a common ancestor, and it was a dog. It doesn't mean the dog and the banana are related. Okay, let's define a few more here, a few more terms. Reasonable, able to reason, fair, just, wise, sensible, not excessive. To say that a dog and a wolf have a common ancestor is reasonable, it's wise, it's sensible. To say that a dog and a banana have a common ancestor is not wise and not reasonable and, and not sensible. Now, if you want to believe that, that's fine, but that's not science. Science means to know things that we can observe or test or demonstrate. A branch of knowledge, one that systemizes facts, principles, methods, skill, or technique. The basic word is knowledge, things that we can know. What can we observe, we can test, we can prove? I will contend tonight that absolutely nothing in evolution above the species level, if you want to use that word, can be proven. It's all speculation. It's all fairy tale. It didn't happen. Now, if you want to believe it happened, that's fine. You're welcome to believe that, but quit calling it science and quit using my tax dollars to put it in our school system with, with real science because it doesn't belong there at all. Hmm. Theory. <laughs> A speculative plan that has been observed to some degree. By the first definition of evolution, yes, we have observed, there's no question that animals can produce a lot of varieties. But I contend the variations have limits. Here's how science is supposed to work. You observe the universe, you create a hypothesis or a theory to explain the observations, and then you present evidence to support your theory. He asked in his closing remarks if I could provide some uh, uh, let's see, well, why should creation be considered as a scientific theory? He wants me to present some predictions. Let me give you in a nutshell what the creationist uh, model presents and then we'll make a few predictions. The creation view says about 6,000 years ago there was an instantaneous creation. All organisms were created together in six days. Uh, I would predict based on this that we would find billions of examples of symbiosis relationships of certain plants that require certain animals and certain animals that require certain plants that defy explanation by slow gradual evolutionary uh, accumulation of mutations. I think we'll find lots of examples in nature if you just open your eyes and look for them, things that could not have evolved bit by bit. Read Darwin's Black Box by Michael Behe, you'll see the irreducible complexity exists all over the universe. Then the creationists teach that these animals will bring forth after their kind. Keep that word kind in mind, not species. The argument is not about species. The argument is about where do different kinds come from. And I don't know if the kind is the same as our family level or genus level or where exactly it is. I'm not sure that our classification